Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we're talking slugging. Now, slugging in skincare is a topic that I get asked a lot of questions about, and I haven't actually filmed that much content covering this because it's not a technique that I personally use in my day-to-day -day skincare routine. However, with a lot of you guys asking questions, I wanted to cover off what is slugging, how it can benefit the skin, some of the things you need to be aware about, and of course, the best products to slug with if you do want to incorporate this technique. It's one of the hottest trends at the moment, but it's actually been something that's been around for decades. So sit back, relax, let's talk all things slugging. Now I would of course love to know what your own experience with slugging has been. Is this something you do day in, day out, or does the whole idea of it and the name actually just put you off? Sound off in the comments section below and let me know. Hopefully whilst you're down there, you also want to give this video a big thumbs up and a like. It's a fantastic way of supporting me in the channel and I always appreciate each and every one of you that takes that small time out of your day to like the content that I create here on Mad About Skin. Now I'm breaking this video down into various sections. We're first gonna talk about what is slugging. We're then going to talk about the pros and cons of slugging and end up with what are the best products to slug with. If you're interested in one section of the video over another, all the timestamps are in the description box below. So kind of navigate your way through. Honestly, I won't be offended if you skip one section over another. So let's start with what is slugging? Well, it's actually not as cringy as that name suggests. There are no snails, there are no slugs involved. What it is, is putting a thin layer of an occlusive product on the skin to finish off your skincare routine. One of the most traditional and commonly used ingredients is this, this is Vaseline, Petrolatum, Petroleum Jelly. You put a thin layer of this across the skin and it's designed to prevent transepidermal water loss. Everybody, no matter what your skin type is, suffers with transepidermal water loss and that's where the moisture, the water in the skin is lost through evaporation to the atmosphere around us. This happens even when we sleep, which is one of the main reasons we wake up with dehydrated, slightly creepy skin. Using an occlusive to kind of lock everything in at the end of your skincare routine can be a great way of minimizing that transepidermal water loss, which is kind of why everyone's loving slugging at the moment. In theory, if you do it correctly, you'll wake up with hydrated skin that's bouncy, more plump, without any of that crepiness that sometimes we can get, especially as we age. I've tried it in the past, but there's a couple of reasons why I don't slug on a regular basis. So let's come on to the pros and cons now. So one of the biggest benefits we've already talked about, preventing transepidermal water loss, particularly important if you have a drier skin type. You want to lock in and retain all the moisture that you have, prevent it being lost to the atmosphere, and using an occlusive such as vaccine Vaseline at the end of your skincare routine can be a great way to achieve that. Another benefit is people say it can actually help repair the barrier function of the skin. I've read some studies on this and I think the jury's out as to how beneficial slugging is for that barrier repair, but it certainly won't do any harm. It will help if you've got particularly sensitive or impaired barrier function to the skin, then I think slugging could help to just calm everything down, provide that occlusive layer, and with the prevention of that transepidermal water loss, of course, the skin is going to be in better health overall, able to repair that a little bit quicker. So I definitely think this is a benefit. When it comes onto the cons, I think these are the ones that are kind of lost in all the hype surrounding slugging. Well, first of all, it's not going to be to everyone's taste. You know, it does leave a very noticeable layer on the skin. It's designed to do that. Occlusives should sit on the skin because that's how they pro provide all that great benefit. But if, like me, you have a super oily skin type, having something that's a visible film on the skin doesn't feel great. And it's kind of a little bit off-putting, which is one of the key reasons that I don't personally slug in my evening skincare routine. It's also a little bit messy because, you know, whilst I would recommend you you wait 20 minutes after slugging before putting your head on the pillow, there will be some product transfer, which, you know, if you've got white sheets, can be a little bit of a hot mess and is definitely something to bear in mind. It isn't going to work for everybody. Whilst Vaseline, which is one of the most common used ingredients for slugging, isn't comedogenic in itself in that it won't clog the pores, slugging can actually increase the rate of acne causing bacteria on the skin, which is something to bear in mind if, like me, you are super acne prone. It does this by kind of creating a greenhouse effect. So you have this layer, this occlusive film on the skin. It traps in all the water, but it can also trap in some of the heat. If you have rosacea, which can lead to redness and irritation in the skin, this could also be problematic because that heat could increase the rate of flare-up, so also bear that in mind. But the heat also increases the rate of acne causing bacteria or has the potential to, which could be a little bit problematic if you're suffering with an ongoing breakout. I'd say if your skin, you know, if your skin is doing what it needs to do and you're not in an active breakout situation, it's absolutely fine to slug and I think it could pay really good benefits. If you're having an active breakout, I probably wouldn't use this technique on those evenings where that's occurring. Focus in on the other actives in your skincare routine to reduce that breakout, kind of get it under control, and then you can reintroduce slugging. 
Finally, one thing I do want to call out is it can be really difficult to find a product that's suitable for slugging that's also cruelty free. Now, this is something that matters a lot to me in terms of my own skincare routine, but won't matter equally to everyone out there. We've all got to make our own decisions when it comes to purchasing skincare brands and individual products. But bear that in mind, most of the commonly used products when it comes to slugging aren't cruelty free, and it can be really difficult to find cruelty free alternatives, particularly a relatively affordable price point. So I guess this is a great chance to then talk about some of the best products to slug with. I don't have the best experience with this because it's a technique that I only do on those super dry months, maybe in the winter months where my skin needs a little extra hydration and I'm suffering from that transepidermal water loss. But in my experience, going for something that's a little bit more lightweight just works better with my oily, acne prone skin. Going for something more heavy duty will definitely pay dividends when it comes to the drier skin types. I've got a little something for everyone. Let's start by saying I personally would ditch the Vaseline. If you're using this to slug with, whilst it will absolutely do what you want it to do, it hasn't got many additional benefits. I find that it's the messiest of all of the ones in terms of application. It takes ages to sink in, leaves a very visible film. It's one of my least favourite products. Now, if you're using Vaseline and it works well for you, keep using it. You know, in skincare, use what works for you. But for me, this was the least pleasant of all the slugging products that I tried out. If you're using Vaseline, you want to mix it up to something that's going to have some additional benefits and also just sinks into the skin that little bit better, i probably switch to the CeraVe Healing Ointment. Again, not my favourite brand. I covered the reasons why I don't shop CeraVe in a recent video, which I'll link up there. But I think this is probably one of the best products from their collection. Vaseline, CeraVe, not cruelty-free, which again goes back to the point where it can be a little bit difficult to find cruelty-free slugging products. But I have got a couple that I want to come on to. This for me was a little bit of a firm pass, and I just genuinely didn't enjoy it. But I think it streets ahead in terms of the benefits of you reaching for that Vaseline. So definitely one that I would recommend, particularly for drier skin types. A lot of people will use Aquaphor, which is again another brand, a little bit difficult to get here in the UK, but is super inexpensive over in the States. And again, I think sinks in even better than that CeraVe. So if I was to choose between the three that I've mentioned so far, Aquaphor probably would be the one that I would reach for. If you want a cruelty free product to slug with, I actually think Drunk Elephant have a really, really nice, it's one of their newer launches, slugging product. Again, I'm not a huge fan of Drunk Elephant. I don't like the price point, some of the ethics that sit behind it, but they are totally cruelty free. This is blended really really well and has some really nice ingredients in here that are going to pay dividends in terms of actually nourishing and enriching the skin alongside just preventing transepidermal water loss. Definitely definitely a product that I would choose over any of the other that I mentioned today and it just works really nice. How I actually choose to slug is I do it on very specific areas. So most of my skin is a grease slick morning through till evening. I don't really need the benefits of slugging but I have noticed as I've aged, you know I'm in my 37th year on planet earth here, I definitely noticed crepiness around the eye when I wake up. So this is an area that for me could definitely benefit from a little bit of slugging action in my skincare routine. I actually reached for this product, which is my own brand. This is the Mad About Skin Nourishing Lip Conditioner. Whilst it's designed for the lips, it's absolutely fantastic if you want a cruelty-free product to slug with. And I just put a little bit of this under the eyes after I've done my skincare routine and harness the power of the beeswax, which is in here, alongside some of the other fantastic ingredients, such as shea butter, the other humectants and oils, which over time just reduce that crepiness, provide a little bit of an occlusive layer to cover my skincare and I definitely wake up with a fresher under eye area as a result. You can use this all over the face as your preferred slugging product but I think the size of the pot lends it re itself really well to those targeted applications. Under the eye where you might have some dryness around the mouth, the lip itself of course, kind of what the product's designed for. And I'd say if you're wondering where to start in terms of slugging, maybe start with those areas where you do experience some dryness, a little bit of crepiness and dehydration on the morning. That's where I think you'll get those instant wins. Don't just follow the trend of slathering it all over the skin unless you think that's right for your individual skin's needs. Hopefully this has kind of debunked some of the myths surrounding slugging, helped you find out some of the products that might work best for your individual skin type, and let me know in the comments what your own experiences have been. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye!